Hello, it's me, and I've had a couple of uh, other viewer questions that I thought were um, kind of important to bring up as they're derivative of some of the previous tutorials but weren't completely addressed, I don't think. Uh, the first one comes from this over here, which is the Trio Cube. Now, before I had shown how to deal with Super Cube centers, basically when you have a situation where you have two that need to be swapped, and I did that in conjunction with uh, four layer Super Cubes. In other words, for example, if you were to take this four layer puzzle over here, that would be a situation where if I had to swap these two. Uh, in order to swap these two, I went through my strategy on swapping these, which at the same time would rotate this. Of course, if you have equivo equivocal centers here, you could just do like a three-way cycle over there. If you had completely separate ones, like this particular four layer ghost cube, let's say uh, these two had to be swapped, what I would have to do is, well, line this up, and the process of swapping these meant rotating this center. So in this particular case, if these were swapped or had to be swapped, that would tell me that this center had to be, uh, had to be rotated. Well, that's all fine and well for four layer puzzles, but in this where you have what is really more of a five layer, you can't really do that because you have uh, issues with these edges here. So if I say wanted to swap these guys here, and I lined it up over here, I could swap them, but then I'd rotate these corners around by 90 degrees. Well, the problem with that is these won't rotate and everything will be out. So in looking at this, we can't use the techniques of the four layer puzzle. In other words, something got wrong over here. So when approaching this, take a look at the puzzle and see that these two have to swap, but they can't swap by themselves, which means that something else has to swap at the same time. So find pieces that are equivalent. And in this puzzle, which pieces are equivalent? Well, when you take a look at edge pieces here, you've got this side, this side, and this side. This is your three by three. So you've got three three by three layers, and you've got three extension layers, hence the trio. Well, it turns out that this edge here and this edge here are equivalent. Don't let the fact that it's attached to these fool you because these are independent. So they move independently. These two are pretty much equivalent to each other. So an approach with a situ uh, situation like this, ask yourself, something must be equivalent. And I've got a whole bunch of things. It could be these two, it could be these two, it could be these two. So really, when looking at this, don't look at this as the problem. The problem is actually somewhere within these guys over here. So all I'm gonna do in order to get this back is I'm going to flip-flop these two over here. Now in solving this, I use this as my first layer, this is my second layer, and this is my third layer, kind of ignoring these terminal sections over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to that process, and I'm going to take this and move it down here. So I'm going to swap this down here. This will end up over here, and I'll just use this as though this were supposed to be up here. So to do that, I'm going to do to swap, to bring this down to here, U R U I R I U I F I U F. So understand what that did is it brought this down over here. Um, what was over here came down to here. Now this one that was here is up here somewhere. It's over here. It's upside down. So I'm just going to kind of take the solve from where I left off with, with that. And this is upright which is what it's supposed to be. This is upside down. These are variable. So I'm gonna hold it here, pretending like this is an L formation. This is right set up, this is right set up. This is upside down, so therefore this or this must be upside down. I'm gonna say that this one is upside down because I get my L. So with that said, I'm gonna do the algorithm that flips all these up correctly. This is right side up, this is right set up. I'm gonna say arbitrarily this is upside down and this is upside down. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do F, R, U, R, I, U, I, F, I, and I'm gonna do it twice because that means this is right set up and this is right set up for the line, and these two are upside down. F, R, U, R, I, U, I, F, I. All right, so this is right side up, and this is right side up. I'm gonna match these to the proper centers. This goes here, this goes here. And now we've kind of, and now we've uh, actually reset the puzzle. So now it's a matter of just getting the corners back in. So this three extensions are supposed to be over here. 
this yellow and red is supposed to be over here. So I'm just gonna turn these around until I get the corners in the proper place. So U, R, U, I, L, I, U, R, I, U, I, L. So I'm really just reassembling this last layer pretty much. Uh, so anything in yet? And not yet, so we'll do it again. U, R, U, I, L, I, U, I, R, I, U, I. L. Now, seeing this situation, this is where it needs to be, this is where it needs to be, but these two aren't. So when you see a situation like that, that means I'm going to want to flip these two. This is correct, this is correct. So I'm going to turn this to the side, and then do R, U, R, I, U, R, to U, R, I. Now, why did I do that? Well, I did that because I'm not taking away the confirmation of these two together, but it did reorganize these two to do the necessary edge swaps. So let's go ahead and once again try to put things in where they're supposed to be. This needs to come over to here and nothing is in yet. So I'm just gonna permute my corners around. Turn, turn, and turn. This is where it needs to be. This is where it needs to be. Well, actually, this is where it needs to be. This is not where it needs to be. It's supposed to be here. So because this is the only one that's in, turn, 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 turn. So I'm just reassembling my last layer. This is good. This is good. And this is actually good. I just have to rotate it. Now, you may think, well, this is the only one to be rotated. And the answer is no. We can rotate this one, too. So we do R I D I R D. R I D I R D R I D I R D and you know the rest. Then I move this one into place and keep turning this around until this is all back in. D I R D R I D I R D. Okay, so we, we've got our shape back. Now basically at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and get all of my um, centers back here, but that parity has been taken out. So you can solve it uh, as such. What I'm gonna do is I have the white one over here. I'm just gonna move this in. So turn it like so, so. I'm just doing the last two center techniques with that. Now I'm gonna hit these guys, put the corners in first. This is good here. Now this has more things that are in. This is good, this is good. This belongs over here, so turn this like so. Move it in, turn move this out. I'm just putting these edges in. So these are all in fine. Now I'm gonna put these guys in. Turn around, this is good. This is good here, this is good here. So these two are in. So I'm just gonna go R, U, R, I, U, R, two, U, R, I. So all of these edges should be in, and I'm just gonna go ahead and get these guys back. So these two are in, I'm gonna move that down. Do I have two that are in here? Nope, I have one in over here, so let's find a red and white, which is right over here, so this will move up to here. Now I can do that last two center algorithm here. All right, so all but one is in over here, so I'm gonna move this up to the top, because this algorithm just cycles this one over here move this into place here, and then cycle these three. So I'm gonna keep doing that until it's all in. This will come here, this will come here, and this will come here with R, U, I, L, I, U, R, I, U, I, L. And finish it up with a U. And I'll do it once more. Turn, 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 turn. So that basically takes it out and that solves it. But the whole key to this is when you see that flip-flopped, I can't apply what we talked about in the last viewer question with these, uh, um, with these super cube four by fours because I have these edges here. So look for equivocal centers or look for equivocal edges rather. Another question that I had was concerning this configuration and I believe this was the exact configuration that was talked about on the L cube. Now in this particular situation, you can see that my base three by three has these two that need to be shifted. So they need to be swapped and they need to be rotated. So when looking at this, first off, when following the tutorial on the L cube, you should never really run into this situation. I think in this particular case, the viewer ran into this because you were solving the terminal ends as your three by threes. I wouldn't do it that way. Go ahead and make sure that these are your terminal ends. So in other words, if this was your bottom uh, three by three over here, 
I, I would use these as your corners and these as your edges, not these. Don't use these as your edges. And then for the middle layer, I'm just focused on these guys. And then for the last layer, focused on these guys. But in any case, I think what probably happened is I think you were trying to use the terminal portions as the colors and now you're stuck with this. If you had it up here, it would be a lot easier to deal with. But now that you have this, how are we going to get out of it? Well, it's the same kind of situation. Uh, I can't flip these without flipping something else. So what else in this puzzle can potentially be flipped? Well, looking at this, I have equivalency of these edges, just like I had equivalency of these edges, ignoring this because they're separate entities. Understand it's the same thing with these two. These two are equivalent because they're not actually physically attached to this. As you were solving this, it was bandaged that way, but it's not, it's not now. So the key, if I want to flip this, don't even focus on an algorithm that does that cleanly while flipping these. Just go ahead and flip these guys. We have a variety of ways of doing that. I can either do it the same way as um, this guy over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this as my bottom layer. This is my middle layer. And I'm going to redo my top layer. But what I'm going to say is that this edge is where it needs to be. This edge is where it needs to be. But this edge and this edge, these two are wrong. I want them to flip. In this case, I'm going to flip these as a top layer and not as a top to middle layer. So if I'm going to say that this is in and this is in, these two are permuted correct, to swap these guys, I'm going to once again put this to the right and put this behind. This is part of uh, the beginner's method. I could just move it over here and just do R U R I U R to U R I. What you're going to find is that that won't change the configuration of this edge and this edge, but it did change these configurations. Now it's just a matter of redoing this particular part of the solve, but you've basically taken the parity out. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put my corners in correctly. Um, these edges are going to stay the same, so which corners are correct? Uh, this one? Nope, obviously not. This one over here? No, nope, this belongs here. And this doesn't belong here, so obviously this isn't right. This isn't right either, nor is this. So I'm just going to... Um, I'm going to do all right. I'm going to do the corner permuting algorithm until this guy is where it needs to be over here. So it's going to be U R U I L I U R I U I L. Not there yet, so do it again. So this is just a matter of reassembly. The details of this doesn't really matter. What matters is recognizing, using the law of cubes, why a swap like that happened and how to swap it back. So this is where it needs to be. This is not correct. This is not correct. This is not correct. So it's a matter of just swapping all these guys around, three cycling them with this algorithm until things are where they need to be. So not quite yet. This is green and yellow. Wants to find a home right over here. All I have to do is make sure that one other one is in and I know the rest are in. Turn and turn. We like this. We like this. Therefore, these two must be in the right place. You can see yellow and red. And this is the yellow one over here. So I'm going to do R-I-D-I-R-D until this is turned correctly and this is turned correctly. R-I-D-I-R-D. R-I-D-I-R. D, and again, turn, 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 and turn. This is good here, so now I'm going to turn this over here, wind this around until this yellow is on top. R I D I R D, R I D I R D. So now my shape is back, and as you can see, we've basically got this back in. And really, the solve, um, the technique that I use for this is I want to get my baseline 3x3 three three in. Stickers are peeling like crazy. But in any case, now we can get these back as the last two centers of a supercube. Um, what we see is this blue needs to come down to here. So I'm just going to place that in. Use one as a sacrificial lamb here. So this is good. Now I'm going to once again put these corners in, or yeah, edges in. This is good and this is good. These two aren't, so I'm going to place it to where the two that are correct in relation to each other is to the right and to the back and do R U R I U R whoop, to U R I. So now I know these are oriented correct with each other. So the concept is the same all the way through. And now it's just a matter of getting getting these all back. Red and yellow. This will come over here.
So I'm gonna move this here by doing the algorithm twice. Turn, 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 and once more. So just put this in by the usual method. Okay. Everything is in but one, so this will become the top layer with this to the top over here. Now I'm gonna just start wheeling these in. This is blue and white, which is gonna belong over here. Turn. So among this, anything in, not yet. Turn, 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 and turn. Well, we accidentally put this in. That's okay for now. So we need to wheel these guys around. So this is a yellow and blue, which belongs actually over here. So I'm gonna move this up here. A turn of that algorithm will place this to here. Turn, 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 and here we go. I've got this section in, turn this down, and now I can coordinate these guys with each other. This to here, this to here, this to here. And I don't even have to pay too close attention to it. Just keep doing that until it's all in because there's no parity with this puzzle now that I've taken care of the false equivocation and you're done. So I kind of hurried through that last part, but but really what it is is it's, it's a solve just like the uh, beginner's method. The whole key was how you got that and you had to look at false equivocation between these two. So when you run into a situation like that where two things need to be swapped, look for two other things that, are, that can be equivocated for each other. Swap them, it'll reset the puzzle, and then just solve it as such.